Hello, it's Kathy Cassidy. I'm here to read you another chapter of Scarlet. And by special request from a lovely reader, Sophia, who is watching along um, all the way from India, um, here is a guest appearance from the lovely Mary Shelley. So Mary Shelley is our rescue tortoise, um, and she actually appears as a character in the other book that I've been reading chapters from, um, Love from Lexi, when you'll find the whole complete set of chapters from Love from Lexi on this YouTube channel if you want to take a look. Mary Shelley is in that story and uh, her awesome self, she is very inspirational as tortoises go. And Mary would like to say hello to everybody watching and especially to Jam who was once her owner, and also to lovely Catkin um, in Cornwall, who she misses loads all of the time. Um, yeah, so anyway, a little bit of a, a little bit of a head nod and semi-wave, perhaps, from Mary Shelley, and I will let her go and have a little rumble around and get on with the next chapter for you. Okay. So, I hope all of you are coping okay with the whole lockdown thing. We have been at quite a dramatic part of Scarlet where she's run away and been found by a mysterious boy with a big black horse and then dropped back at her dad's house. So we're on chapter 11, which is the next day. So, last night I had a bath and ate macaroni cheese and Claire bandaged my ankle and Dad hugged me and told me never to frighten him again like that. Then I went to bed in the little sky blue room with the nursery border and slept for the first time in a week, dreaming of the woods and the loch and a boy called Kian on a shiny black horse. Today though, it's back to normal. Dad is pacing up and down the kitchen, seriously stressy. Claire sits at the table, stitching some patchwork and trying to keep the peace. Okay, Scarlet, says Dad, talk, let's hear it. How the last, last chance fizzled out before you even gave it a proper try. Do you know how hard it's gonna be to get that school to take you back? I'm not going back, I tell him. Oh yes, Scarlet, you are. Don't you see how much you scared us last night? What happened to the mobile you were carrying? It fell into Loch Coil, I mutter. Your shoes? Can't remember. I chew my fingernails absently, chipping off a flake of shiny black lacquer. Scarlet, Dad says, you have to talk about this. Surely you realise that. You can't just expect us to ignore things the way your mother does. She doesn't ignore it, does she? I fling back at him. I wouldn't be here if she did. Dad slumps against the kitchen sink. Your mum is at the end of her tether, Scarlet, he says. Things were difficult for her after the divorce and I expect she let you get your own way a bit too much. You started behaving badly and now it's a habit, a habit that's going to ruin your life. Doesn't that mean anything? My life is already ruined, I tell him. You saw to that. Dad takes a deep breath in, face creased with guilt. Scarlet, your mum and I got divorced. People do, he says tiredly. In the long run, it was for the best. We weren't happy, either of us. I was happy, I interrupt, my voice a little shaky. Divorce wasn't for the best for me. It was the worst, okay? And it's all your fault. So don't start telling me how to behave and don't start telling me what I can and can't do. You don't have the right, Dad, okay? You gave up on all that stuff when you walked out on us. Scarlet, enough, Dad sighs. I know you're angry and I know you blame me, but you have to see you can't go on behaving like this. You need firm boundaries, rules, and as soon as that ankle is better, you are going back to school. Yeah, right. It's lunchtime and I'm sitting in a cafe with Claire, eating mozzarella wraps and sipping tall glasses of milk. We're in Castle Bar, almost an hour's drive from the cottage because in this crazy middle of nowhere place, that's how far you have to go to get to a proper hospital. 
I've had my ankle x-rayed and been told there's nothing broken and I am a very lucky girl because, because wedge heels with ribbon ties are the deadliest form of footwear ever invented. Maybe. The new flat Velcro strap sandals Claire just bought me in a hiking shop down the street have got to be the ugliest, that's for sure. Sadly, there wasn't a whole lot of choice. I needed something that would fit over my hospital bandage, end of story. Good food, Claire says, polishing off her wrap and hoovering up what's left of the salad and crisps. Shall we have pudding? Your dad won't be expecting us back for ages. The waitress wanders over and Claire orders strawberries and cream while I opt for chocolate cake. I'm mad about strawberries with this pregnancy, Claire says. It's a real craving. I roll my eyes and start fiddling with the menu because I really don't want to hear about Claire's pregnancy. It's the final betrayal, proof that Dad has moved on. He's got everything he wants now. A country cottage, a stay-at-home wife, a cute little girl with her hair in bunches and a new baby on the way. Then guess what? I turn up on the doorstep like a redirected parcel and everything goes sour. Claire takes the menu out of my hands. This must be hard for you, she says. I can see you might be feeling angry. Please give us a chance, though. We really want this to work. And I really don't. What actually happened at school, Scarlet? What made you lose the plot? I blink. It's such a simple question, really, but one that Dad never thought of asking. I take a bite of chocolate cake, but it's too dry, too rich. It sticks in my throat, along with Claire's question. Dad enrolled me as Scarlet Flynn, I say at last. I'm not Scarlet Flynn anymore, OK? OK, Claire says. You can be Scarlet Murray. That's fine. I'm not Scarlet Murray either, just Scarlet. Claire nods her head, frowning slightly. Just Scarlet, OK. The ache in the pit of my stomach is back and that choking feeling in my throat. I don't feel well, I say to Claire. I haven't for a while. I felt bad on Thursday at school and it just got worse and worse as the day went on. Claire narrows her eyes. OK, so you were feeling what? Sick? Headachy? Feverish? I nod because I felt all of those things and that was just the start. It got worse when Miss Madden started up with that Irish stuff, I explain. I had sort of an ache here. I press a fist against my chest and, and here in my throat. I could hardly speak. My heart was thumping too. Do you think it could be serious? Could be a panic attack. Claire bites her lip. What were you doing in Irish? What was the work? Some worksheet, I mumble. Was there a theme? The family, I whisper. She puts an arm around me and I want nothing more than to burrow into her soft, warm body and cry until the hurt goes away. I can't, though, because if I did that, there would be no going back. Instead, I shake her arm off my shoulder roughly. Don't, I growl. Just don't, OK? I feel the anger rising like a tidal wave, flooding my body and making my hands shake. I slam out of the cafe and even though I'm limping a little, I'm halfway down the street before Claire catches up with me. She grabs onto my sleeve, pulls me round to face her. Scarlet, she says. Scarlet, it's okay. I shake her off but she grabs me again, hanging on this time. Count to ten, she says softly. Then take some nice, steady yoga breaths and let the anger go. Leave me alone, I scream, and the cry seems to split the air around us. Leave me alone, I repeat, my voice no more than a whisper now. I can't, Claire says calmly. I won't, Scarlet. I'm here, OK? I don't want you, I choke out. I know that, and I'm sorry, Claire says but I'm here, all the same. I turn my head away and fight to keep back the tears because I don't want her sympathy and I don't want her help. She's the enemy and I can't let myself forget that. Not now, not ever. So there's another chapter of Scarlet and we're gonna have to see 
what happens next. I hope that you will be able to tune in for the next chapter tomorrow. Meanwhile, I love thinking about where you all are when you're listening. Um, I think of Ali dancing around her kitchen or sitting outside next to her blue shed. Um, I think of, of my readers in different countries who are tuning in, like, like Sophia in India. And I think of friends all around the UK who I know are listening at different times of the day. And it really makes me happy and it makes me feel a lot less alone in the lockdown so if you if you read this maybe just drop me a little comment on the youtube channel and tell me what you do and what time of the day you're listening to the chapter um yeah and what it means to you because that will that will really help me thanks so much um keep on smiling and i will see you again for another chapter tomorrow